Let's roll. We are kicking it live at the beautiful MGM Grand, straight from the Strip in Las Vegas, Nevada, as countdown to kickoff continues. It's starting to get real uh, right now. There's just a couple of uh, final more nights uh, before it's game day, and we're getting fired up. We've got a great uh, panel going to be joining us on the program tonight, uh, live at the MGM, as well as we caught up uh, with uh, our main man, old school friend of the program, and uh, just, you know, all out badass, Kyle Turley returns. All right, so Kyle Turley's going to join us. I'm really fired up. Dahani Jones is going to join us. Uh, Michigan Wolverine national champion, 1997. He played in the Super Bowl uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. So he's played for Coach uh, Andy Reid. And I can't lie, there's going to be some go blue and some Michigan talk uh, with Dahani Jones when Dahani Jones uh, joins us. I was told that Joe Gibbs is going to join us. I'm thinking, isn't Joe Gibbs busy with NASCAR? But the other Joe Gibbs, and we've got a guy, this is, man, I'm, I'm super excited about this. And for all of you that are serious about betting on the big game, um, get your Sharpies out or hit the record button uh, because uh, we've got an NFL referee statistician uh, in the house. You guys know I've been talking a lot about liking the, uh, the under penalty prop uh, in this game. So I'm actually going to get some more data to back this up on the program. I look forward to seeing what Joe uh, likes. Um, man, there's so many options. There's so many props uh, out there. And it's easy. You know, you get caught up on what you like. And then you start seeing and you're remembering, man, I like this too. I like that as well. We've talked a lot about the team to score first that doesn't win the game. Five of the last seven Super Bowls, the team that scored first ended up losing uh, the game. Now, something that I find interesting about this game, and I keep coming back to this, I talked about this briefly yesterday. Over the last 24 hours or so, I keep sort of emphasizing to myself, thinking about this game, and listening to San Francisco talk and soaking everything in, that the 49ers are going to be super aggressive early in this football game. I think the 49ers, and I know it sounds cliche, they want to get a lead. Everybody wants to get a lead. But we should note this, that... The Kansas City Chiefs have not had the lead in any of the Super Bowls that they've been in yet with Patrick Mahomes. They've been a second-half team, all right? The playoffs, th these playoffs have been a little bit different. They got a Miami team in ice-cold uh, conditions. You know, they rolled them easily. The Buffalo Bills game was really close. The Bills were depleted on the defensive side of the football due to injury. And then they were in control against the, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, uh, obviously. But when it comes to Super Bowls, they haven't had the lead once. And we talk, I think the Kansas City are going to score first. I'm really going to start, like, swinging for the fences here, guys. I think Kansas City are going to score first, but I think San Francisco are going to score the first touchdown uh, of the game. I think the San Francisco 49ers are going to have the lead after the first half. And this is a bet that I'm really starting to, uh, to buy into a lot. San Francisco with Brock Purdy, they know they're dealing with Mahomes. Mahomes is going to be Mahomes. He's going to do his thing. You need to do what you can do when you have the ball because you know they're going to score, all right? You're not shutting down Kansas City's offense. I know it's not quite as potent as it has been in past years. They score 22 points a game only compared to, like, nearly 30 in past years. But nevertheless, you know that Mahomes is not going to get totally shut down. He did in one Super Bowl, but he didn't have an offensive line uh, in that game. So if you're, if you're Shanahan... You've been down this road before, man, right? You were the offensive coordinator of the Atlanta Falcons. You had a 28-3 lead uh, in the Super Bowl. You had a double-digit lead. Actually, you know, everything I'm saying is just totally wrong <laughs> because Shanahan's had the lead a million times. And I'm like, they really want the lead. Yeah, they had a 28-3 lead in the Super Bowl, and they didn't score a single point uh, in the fourth quarter. All right, they had a 10-point lead again. They had a double-digit lead against the Kansas City Chiefs four years ago when they played in the Super Bowl. We all know what happened. The wheels completely fell off. It's easy to forget, too, that they blew a double-digit lead against the Los Angeles Rams in the conference championship game. All right? Shanahan and blown leads are synonymous. But, you know, is it better that they play from behind? Maybe that's the way that it plays out. But... As we stated, if you look at the pattern of Shanahan in these big games, he's coming out hot, man. All right? They're coming out hot early. 
I mean, remember that Atlanta game against the New England Patriots. So I like the San Francisco 49ers to score the first touchdown of the game. I think Kansas City, and this is just a gut hunch, that Kansas City are going to score a field goal, and San Francisco will then be the next score, and they're going to score a touchdown. Now, there's a number out there right now. It's like plus 500 as well. San Francisco to win the first half, Kansas City to win the game. I don't have a problem with racking up a bunch of plus money plays. And you're going to say, well, don't you like San Francisco in a game? Yeah, I do. But at the same point in time, I don't mind having four, five, six, plus 400, plus 500 options rolling here. Right? You know, San Francisco to win the first half, Kansas City to win the game. And then how about, you know, San Francisco to go wire to wire? That'll, you know, that will go over all the odds. That's going to be a nice payday. But I do think San Francisco are going to have the lead at the half uh, in this uh, football game. It's a fascinating situation. We, you know, we've talked about this, about it's extremely rare that the defending Super Bowl champion is actually an underdog the following year when they're back at the Super Bowl. It's only happened two other times before, and both times the team's actually lost. Right? So, you know, that's something interesting. This is the eighth Super Bowl rematch. The team that won the first time is five and two. Just saying. All right, we're gonna give you we're gonna give you data on both sides, you know, and you can make up your own mind. But and there's another interesting one too here as well. This is only the third time that it's been the same coaches that are going head to head in a Super Bowl for the second time. Both previous times, the coach that won the first time uh, beat the coach again after the fact. And I got to tell you, actually, I think uh, <laughs> unfortunately. As a Buffalo Bill fan, I know um, it's Marv Levy and Jimmy Johnson, right? The Buffalo Bills uh, lost uh, back-to-back uh, to the Dallas Cowboys. Shanahan as well. There's so many interesting storylines here that don't include Taylor Swift. And for the record, you can't bet on any Taylor Swift uh, props here, right? I'm not big on the frivolous sort of type of props, and I know people like to have fun with them, and... I don't mind some of the cross-sport props. You know, how many, how many goals is a team going to score compared to how many, like, receptions a player is going to have. I don't mind having some fun uh, with something like that. But, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, to, to the props, it's, you know, there's so many of them, it could be overwhelming. But always, you know, think about, think about the game script and how this is going to play out. All right, think, think about the game script and how it's going to play out. And how you can maximize it on both sides, and I, you know, I, like I said, I really think that the San Francisco to win the first half, San Francisco to win the game, play as well as San Francisco to win the first half, Kansas City to win the game, play. Right then and there, you got plus money in your pocket with both of them. All right, then you just want Kansas City uh, to struggle early in this game. San Francisco wins the first half. Either way, you're winning your bet. All right, we've got a lot more on the other side. Let's do this thing. This team has been capable of overcoming deficits until this season. In 2023, the Kansas City Chiefs are two and four when they trail by more than seven points at any point in the game. And the only two comeback wins that they have are over backup quarterbacks that do not have a lot of experience. It's smarter to be on sports grid. I'm digging deep, fellas. I'm digging deep. Christian McCaffrey minus 220. Donnie, how could you do that? The price point is way out of control in this. Keep it simple. The goal is to win money, not to outsmart everybody. Mahomes is minus 140 to throw two touchdown passes. 
And if he's going to, every single thing suggests a wide receiver will haul in at least one, if not both. Pro Football Today, only on SportsGrid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Points scored in the fourth quarter of that Falcons Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and the Niners were shut out. Yep. So in the two biggest games of the two Super Bowls, one is the coordinator, one is the head coach. He hasn't scored a single point in the fourth quarter. <laughs> that if and I tell you what, if they don't on Sunday, they're not winning the game, bro. E- exactly. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Gabriel Morenzi, we're kicking it live at the MGM Grand, straight from the Strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. Countdown to kickoff continues. Uh, we're going to be here for one more night tomorrow night. We're going to end the week uh, with a bang, as we always do, uh, Super Bowl week. But it's time to start getting more serious about our props and giving you reasons why uh, you should bet what you should bet. And we've got a guy uh, joining us right now, a man joining us, who uh, does a lot of work with uh, Warren Sharp. Uh, Sharp Football, who, of course, is a contributor uh, to the grid and one of the sharpest guys uh, in the business. And uh, Joe Gibbs, not the football coach. Although, I tell you what, I've said this before. When everyone, when Belichick just got, and welcome to the show, Joe. Thanks a lot Thanks, for joining Jay. us. Thanks for having me. Uh, but when Bill Belichick just parted ways with the Patriots, there was so much talk about, wow, he's the greatest coach of all time. And I flippantly sort of told somebody, I said, listen, I showed them his winning percentage without Tom Brady. And I said, Joe Gibbs actually won three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks. That's the big thing. And I just say this now because Andy Reid's name gets brought up now. Andy Reid, one of the greatest coaches of all time. I'm not disputing that. Yet Andy Reid suddenly is a lot better coach now, isn't he? Because he has Patrick Mahomes. How impressive was that to the actual... Joe Gibbs, how impressive was it that the other Joe Gibbs actually accomplished that? It really is. I don't think it's talked about enough, actually. It does. It it gets overshadowed in the overall scheme of things. Yeah. And it was a pretty short time period that he did it, too. Ten years. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's really impressive. And he kind of gets overlooked in the overall scheme of greatest coaches. But, hey. You know, I think could pull it off would be uh, Sean McVay. I love McVay. I could see McVay winning another Super Bowl down the road with another quarterback. I'd rave about him on to Warren all the time. I'm like, you know, Mc, Mc, here's the thing. McVay teams and McVay coaches. Yeah, look at the his, coaching tree. Guys huh? from his tree, they're the most disciplined overall teams in the league year after year after year. If you look, they are. I thought the Rams, I know we're, we're going to get to everything, but I thought the Rams actually were going to beat the Lions. They did cover the number. You know, they were getting three, three and a half. They ended up losing the game by one. And I did think there was a big advantage, Sean McVay versus Dan Campbell. Yet it didn't turn out that way uh, on that Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I mean, it came down to a couple of plays here and there, and often they do. But, I mean, look. Red zone was the difference, yeah. Yes, yeah, and, and that was a problem with the Rams down the stretch because I, I remember having them in a few games, and they got the red zone against lesser opponents, and they settled for field goals. It didn't hurt them in the end, but they were playing a quality opponent on the road, and in the end it got, it got them. Are you what were, Coming into the playoffs, who did you think would be playing uh, here in this game? Did you think... San Francisco? Yeah. I mean, I, I thought San Francisco, but I thought Buffalo or Baltimore were going to knock Kansas City off. 
I didn't trust Buffalo. Um, Baltimore, to me, Baltimore's best game was better than anyone else's best game. Unfortunately, that didn't work out for them in the AFC. They didn't have their best game on that day. That was their problem. They had their probably worst game. Yeah. And so, and I could say the same thing in the NFC that San Francisco's A game is better than anyone else's A game in the NFC. And they, here they are. But they haven't played well for, geez, a good six to seven weeks. They, they've kind of been shaky. So let me ask you as I stated, Warren Sharp's one of the brightest minds uh, in sports handicapping and very analytical into data. How did you, how did you start working with Warren? And, what was it about officiating that that caught your eye that that became your interest to, to, to focus on? Um, well, to, to answer the first part, Warren found me on Twitter, and he just started sort of retweeting my content. This is back in 2021, and as actually as we got into the playoffs in 2021, in fact, I remember it was a Bill Vinovich officiated game, the AFC Championship between the Bengals and the Chiefs, where there was a lot of no calls, and Warren kept amplifying my stuff on Twitter and so yeah. in that off season he reached out to me and said That's hey would awesome. you be interested so as far as me doing it to begin with um look, I, yeah go ahead but look, I just wanted to ask actually then so it, it, with baseball handicapping a lot of baseball batters are really aware of the umpires right. what what the strike zone is this guy he likes a fast game he wants to get back to the hotel <laughs> right like the yeah. sort of nuances and there's something to it, and handicappers believe in it, and not some people never even imagine of it. But how how much do you look at each officiating crew from a handicapping perspective on a regular Sunday afternoon in the NFL with each crew? Well, I do the research during the week because the NFL releases the assignments on a Tuesday. So once they all come out, and I already have an idea in my head as to who I like in a certain game, then once I see the officiating assignments, then I'm like, okay, that either – helps that bet or maybe I'd take a step back you know if I get like if I like a game over let's just say team yeah. and, and such and such referees on it who's kind of an under referee I'm like eh, well, that's not the greatest on the flip side if I like a game over and I see a good over referee I'm like okay n now let's really go all in on this thing so so you've you you bet the penalty props every Sunday no well I almost every game or you pick your spots with certain crews as far as penalty props go they're few and far between they don't the sports books don't do them most, mostly. No, the, and but, I'm fortunate that I know a few that do. Yeah, but they I, do it for this game. And I, yeah, they will. Yes. I tell you what, they didn't like the ten and a half bet that I already got in because they moved it to nine and a half. Right, right, <laughs> right. And there's still some ten and a halves out there, but I don't see eleven penalties in the game. I just don't see it. Um, we'll touch on the team yeah. averages later on, but. Um, yeah, as far as during the regular season, there's no penalty props, but a lot of this stuff you can still use just on a week-to-week -week basis, like we do at Sharp Football. You know, if Team A struggles with offensive holding and there's a crew that calls a lot of offensive holding, yeah. well, that's yeah. a problem. Yeah. On the flip side, if you've got a team that commits a lot of defensive pass interference and a referee who doesn't call a lot of that, well, that's, that helps them. That's a, that's a weakness for them that's not going to be exposed as much. So let me ask you, and I, I jumped in, but I want to ask, so how did you start focusing in on this aspect? And... Do, you know, do, did you sort of, were you doing other sports before, like, you know, looking at officiating as well, or just the National Football League? Oh, I look at all of them. In fact, I mean, the poster child for officiating is the NBA. I yeah. mean, you so is that, the, is that the league that is the most affected by each crew? Oh, absolutely. I think, it, I mean, I, that's just my yeah. opinion. I mean, look, they had the Tim Donaghy scandal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now that got sort of pushed, you know, they're like, oh, nothing to see here. But there was something to see, and I think there was a lot more to see than they let on. But I would agree with that. Remember, Joey, because there's a lot of people that were around him that are still there. Yes. <laughs> well, Scott Foster. Remember? Well, he's still there. Scott yeah. Foster's still there. And I, you know, I know we're Super Bowl week. I don't think uh, the Philly mob is here or anything. But you'll notice every one of these damn NBA referees, they're all from the same part of Philadelphia. Yeah, they'll hang on the same country clubs. Yeah, and no, it's funny too. I've spoken to people in Philly, and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's totally like a shady part of town. Like, <laughs> so it's like right. they're sort of like this this thing. You grow up in Philly, you know, it's almost like Boston, you rob banks, right? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like the town, you grow up in Philly, it's like, yeah, I'm going to be a shady NBA ref. <laughs> but but an, another NBA ref, you probably remember Joey Crawford? Yeah, of course. Oh, man, he, he was David Stone's go-to guy. If, if a team was down 2-1 in the series, yeah, you could okay. bet so Joey Now Crawford. they think Scott Foster's that sort of, we call him the hitman. Yes. All right, oh, they said the hitman ref. Who's by definition, in your opinion, the league ref? in the National Football League? Oh, boy. Tough question. See, I don't it? think... I don't think the... Like, I hear all the stuff about rigged and stuff. Yeah. I don't think the NFL is like the NBA. 
I, I think it's all on the up and up. That's just my opinion. Now, they just call it a different way. Like, two guys can see the same thing and they have a different point of view. Um, like, so I don't know if there's a go-to guy. They have their kind of favorites. Like, Vinovich is a favorite, which I, I think he's a great referee, so I'm, I'm good with that. I like his style of refereeing, which is let him play, you know? And I read, and I, you know, focusing on, on the prop so much, I look back and I read reviews and studied the game that from four years ago, and the criticism was actually 49er fans were upset that he let too much go. Yes, well, right? that's what he's going to do. And, well, get ready because yeah. he's going to do it again this Sunday. So, you And know. I talked about this too as well, and I, I'm totally with you. I told people this. The NBA does care who's in the finals. Yes. We've talked about this. They didn't like when the Raptors were in the finals. They don't want the Sacramento Kings in the finals. They like the marquee teams. We all know this. You know this, Joe. The NFL doesn't matter. 90 million people are going to watch the Super Bowl no matter who's playing in the damn game. Well, you got you got a small market team in Kansas City. Yeah. You know, That's the marquee team, though. Yeah. So you can have Green Bay and Kansas City. No one cares. Green Bay, Buffalo, Kansas City. These are small markets. It's not like, like you said, the NBA is a yeah. star-driven league. They and want the TV Lakers. Ratings, they, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, Democrat, the... the um, yeah. The TV market size, the TV market size. Really was. But speaking of conspiracy, I don't think it's conspiracy, but Roger Goodell all week has been ambushed by people in the media coming at him about gaming and betting and all this type of stuff. The last thing he wants with the first Super Bowl in Vegas is a controversial penalty to decide this game. Bet the under and we'll tell you why. <laughs> This team has been capable of overcoming deficits until this season. In 2023, the Kansas City Chiefs are two and four when they trail by more than seven points at any point in the game. And the only two comeback wins that they have are over backup quarterbacks that do not have a lot of experience. It's smarter to be on sports grid. I'm big and deep, fellas. I'm big and deep. Christian McCaffrey minus 220. Donnie, how could you do that? The price point is way out of control in this. Keep it simple. The goal is to win money, not to outsmart everybody. Mahomes is minus 140 to throw two touchdown passes. And if he's going to, every single thing suggests a wide receiver will haul in at least one, if not both. Pro football today. Only on SportsGrid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Points scored in the fourth quarter of that Falcons Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and the Niners were shut out. Yep. So in the two biggest games of kind of the two Super Bowls, one is a coordinator, one is a head coach. He hasn't scored a single point in the fourth quarter. That if they, I tell you what, if they don't on Sunday, they're not winning the game, bro. E exactly. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
We are kicking it live at the MGM Grand, straight from the Strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. Countdown to kickoff is on. We're throwing it down with an expert when it comes to NFL officiating and NFL ref stats. One on Twitter, works for Sharp Football, uh, Warren Sharp, Joe Gibbs uh, with us. And Joe, I've talked about going into the last break about Roger Goodell all week. Listen, you know, the media is always going to look for a controversy. Uh, what do you want from Goodell, right? This, and I like what Goodell said. He goes, listen, it's legal in 38 states. Like, we evolved with the times. It wasn't legal before. So he is very, he was getting defensive about it a little bit. And as I stated, in my opinion, it doesn't mean it's going to be a free-for-all. But does this mean, let me ask you, the expert on officiating, did they go to Vinovich because he thinks, you know what? He's one of the best damn referees in the league. I trust him the most. Oh, absolutely. That's part of it. They, they supposedly do a rating system, and he was one of the best referees, which I think he is. But he's also not going to throw a lot of flags, so there's not going to be that controversy. Will he? Th now, on the flip side of that, he's not going to throw some flags in situations where... But some people want one. Yes. So <laughs> just get ready, because I can guarantee you there's going to be two or three instances on Sunday where there's a holding and it doesn't get called. Because that's Vinovich's ammo. So I talked about it a lot. I got in on under 10 and a half. There's still some 10 and a halfs out there. You got to lay a little juice. Maybe there's some plus money, nine and a half when it comes to total penalties accepted. It really is amazing. So this is the first time ever, actually, that a referee is doing a Super Bowl a second time with the same team. Correct. He did, so, it, yeah. he did it in 2020. Kansas City was a 31-20 KC win. Yeah, and, and he called nine penalties. To 69 yards. Yes, sir. And the two teams that season, the, the two teams average combined was 12.53 penalties for like 114 yards. Wow, that's higher then than they are this year. Yes, this and, year the combined is, it's like 11. Yeah, 5.8, 5.3, I think. Correct, yeah. so, so it's about 11, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's why they set it at 10 and a half, but, but, I talked about this yesterday. Last week, in, uh, two weeks ago in the last game, NFC Conference Championship game, San Francisco had three penalties. Kansas City had three penalties as well. And you got some data that you sent me last night. Me and uh, me and Joe were just going back and forth uh, last night about uh, Binovich. No referee has called fewer roughing the passer penalties than Bill Vinovich since the start of the 2018 season. Correct. And it's by a long way. Um, to put it in perspective, since 2018... Vinovich averages one roughing the passer approximately every seven games. That's what he does. Wow. The rest of the league over that time, every 2.5 games. So that just shows you how little he calls it. I would like that if I was San Francisco because I'm trying to get at Mahomes and there's right. always... And right. that's not a conspiracy. That's just factual that they treat Mahomes nicely, right? He, he they, is, like the same way they did with Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean, they do, but... Um, <sighs> Yeah, he just doesn't call it a lot. Now, anything can happen. On the flip side, he does call more than average in playoff games unnecessary roughness penalties. In these last 14 games, he's, he's called 13. So the 49ers and Chiefs offenses are the top five beneficiaries of defensive defensive holding and fracture. Yes. How is this going to affect the game? Because this some is of an these interesting things one. contradict each other, right? Correct. So they're the top five benefit, two top five beneficiaries of defensive holding on the offensive side. But defensively, they're both on the lower end of committing these penalties. Interesting. So I, I, I can't... It sort of balances out. Yes, yes. And it makes sense because they've got skill. People grabbing, tackling. Kelsey, don't, they don't want Samuel getting right. past them. Right. Uh, makes sense. So uh, Vinovich is a co-ranked uh, one um, for illegal use of hands penalties and second overall for illegal block in the back penalties in right. 2023. That's correct. So... They use all-star crews. They have two Vinovich guys and two hockey league guys. They're kind of in charge of all that area around the line of scrimmage. Well, those two emphasize those two penalties you just mentioned. Illegal use of hands, illegal block in the back. The illegal use of hands, the Chiefs struggle in that area. Now, the positive is it's a low-volume penalty. So, yeah, 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 they're, yeah, they're ranked highly, but it's not one that you see that often. But it is an issue for them. So... What are some of the other bets that you can share with us? We talked about the penalty props. Is there yes. any, any other ways that we should approach this from the angle of a Vinovich crew? Yes. Um, total sacks is here at, M at Bet MGM. It's five and a half here. The under's minus 180. Love but it. There's a lack of em uh, de-emphasis on offensive holding. It's gone way down. Vinovich calls the fewest offensive holding penalties in the 2023 season. And in fact, in his playoff game going all the way back to 2014 he averages 0 0.9 offensive holding penalties per game so less than one per game on average 
that benefits the offense. It puts the defense at a disadvantage, which means you can't get to the quarterback quite as quick as you normally could if they're actually calling the penalty. So the offense knows they have a little bit of leeway, which means you can't get to the quarterback as quickly, which means he gets rid of it. So the under five and a half sacks, I don't see how any way they get six. I've been saying this for, for a couple of months. I don't know, like for three months, 12 weeks of football, 10 weeks or whatnot. That it seems to me, and that's why I'm glad you're here, because I don't have any data. It's just, it was it in my head or not. But it seems like the NFL as a whole, the officiating was very sloppy earlier in the year. But it seems like as a whole, a lot of crews backed off calling penalties. Am I crazy? Oh, no. His you... offenses were like, dude, what do we have to do to get a pass interference penalty called? They've... They always try to tone it down in the playoffs. I think the league sends out a memo. The league wants an aesthetically pleasing game. Okay, they don't want flags thrown every, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a memo sent. But the big decline out of all the penalties is offensive holding. That's the number one decline. It's down about 50 to 60% regular season versus playoffs. And Vinovich calls the fewest to begin with. So you're not going to see a lot of offensive holding penalties benefits the offense and it benefits the Chiefs the most because they were the number one penalized team for offensive holding and they're just not calling it as much so the one weakness they had from a penalty perspective was offensive holding it's disappeared yeah that's a huge advantage yeah, and we saw it all year fascinating stuff I uh, hear with Joe Gibbs NFL ref stats one on uh, Twitter as far as the game itself I've spoken to a lot of a um, lot of former NFL players uh, current guys that play in the league and everybody sort of talks about San Francisco for a couple of minutes and then says, but can't go against Patrick Mahomes. How do you feel about this game? I mean, I've been riding the Chiefs, I think, four of the last six weeks going back to the regular season. I mean, that they've got that championship DNA. I mean, it's hard to overlook that. San Francisco's best is the best of any team in the, in the NFC. We haven't seen that for a while. I mean, it's been yeah. since October, November. I think their last really good game was against Philly in Philly, if I remember correctly. So you're, you have your concerns whether yes. they can find that. Yes. They can find that again. And their defense has really struggled, you know, down the stretch. When they lost Pufanga, the, the safety. Yeah. If you look at their defensive metrics since he's gone out, it's just not the same defense. And Chase Young, he's a big name, but he's garbage. He's just not a good player. I was surprised, and you know, we all saw the viral video, right? Yeah, yeah. Of, of Chase Young's effort, lack of effort <laughs> on the play. He did make some plays in the second half uh, uh, with, the, with the ground game, but considering the money that he makes and what they gave up, uh, I totally get that, but I did find it fascinating that that Coach Steve Wilkes, a defensive coordinator I saw this week, they actually had a defensive only team meeting, yeah. and he showed them the tape, and he said that's a caught, like it's I amazing to me that a team as good as the Niners, this late in the season, needed a defensive sort of group huddle and, and yeah. a a thrashing from the coaches saying, guys, yeah. we're I mean, one win away from the right. Super Bowl. Can you act like you try here? Right. If you can you pretend like you care? If you can't give effort in the NFC, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. What, is, it, is the meeting going to change anything? I, I, I don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out Sunday. But it is a concern. Their defense has not been good. If they can run the ball, keep the defense off the field, I mean, it protects the weakness of the team. I mean, a prop that I've talked a lot about this week is both teams getting into the 20s. That I do think both teams are going to score 20-plus points. What kind of tempo and pace are you looking at? What are your thoughts on the total at 47 and a half? Well, Vinovich is a great under-referee. In fact, going back to 2018, he's 60, 39, and 2 to the under. So 61% under-referee. So there's that to factor in. I That's don't a know. pretty significant number right there. Yeah, I guess this, good, is, this is the byproduct of him leaving the whistle in the pocket. Exactly. He gives an advantage de defense. Yes. He, he provides leeway on both sides, but in the end, the defense wins out. I mean, as far as the total, I, I, the biggest thing to me is going to be that field condition on Sunday because nobody really knows how that field's going to be. It's been sitting out in the rain for the last four or five days, and they're wheeling it in today. We'll see. Great call. And we've already seen San Francisco have problems with their practice field right. to begin with. We've seen in Arizona, the paint was still too yes, slick. It was a disaster. It was, so, it's amazing, isn't it, that the, they get so much right, right that, as you stated, like, why is the field, like, sitting in a parking lot behind Mandalay Bay right now right, in the rain? Right. And I get it. Wow, we had media day earlier. Right. They don't have it there. Right. Have it here. Right? Like, know. you know, figure have it out. Have it in the whole room. Have it no, in the whole it is room. crazy that they, they haven't put the field in yet. But, but here's the thing, and this is where I think Bettis can get an advantage, is... The in-game wagering, all the algorithms, all the algorithms are set to that 47 and a half, 48 total. Yeah. 
they don't have time to change it once the game starts. So you're watching it as a viewer and you're seeing guys, hypothetically, slipping and losing traction. It favors the offense. We saw it last year in Arizona. And so you can, you can take advantage from an in-game perspective because that algorithm is set at that 47 and a half. They don't, I mean, they can kind of change it, but, but again, you have the advantages of better early on. And you watch it and you can see that field. If guys are slipping and sliding, defense is not getting there, the offense has, has the advantage. And you know what was amazing? Last year, man, great stuff with Joe Gibbs. We're definitely going to have Joe on again. Follow him on Twitter. Just a wealth of information. You're exactly right. I, I think back, too, there was a, you know, I expect you to know this, but the, the CFL, Great Cup, there was a Great Cup Classic in the 70s, and it was in Montreal. It was so cold. And they went through all kinds of shoes. It was literally on ice. Everyone was slipping. And the Montreal Alouettes, actually, one of the players put staples. <laughs> and it actually worked. And, like, a bunch of dudes used staples. But last year, same thing. The field could be an issue early. Right. And this is when the training staff comes into play because the Kansas City Chiefs basically said, we changed shoes. Yep. Right? The Eagles right. just sort of didn't and right. complained throughout right. the game. The Chiefs caught on early and knew. And Get the other cleats out. This is a slippery field right now. And it's little things like that that make the difference in the end. Man. And the Chiefs have that experience, and it's like, you know. And the Niners already kind of in their head with that yeah. practice field stuff yeah. was kind of weird. The other thing to watch for, too, I always look at this. Defensive backs, what color gloves are they wearing? They need to wear the same color gloves as the opposing team's oh, jerseys. So you can get the, you yes. can get that free holding. That's a Belichick. <laughs> that's a Belichick <laughs> special. Great stuff with Joe Gibbs here. This team has been capable of overcoming deficits until this season. In 2023, the Kansas City Chiefs are two and four when they trail by more than seven points at any point in the game. And the only two comeback wins that they have are over backup quarterbacks that do not have a lot of experience. It's smarter to be on sports grid. I'm digging deep, fellas. I'm digging deep. Christian McCaffrey minus 220. Donnie, how could you do that? The price point is way out of control in this. Keep it simple. The goal is to win money, not to outsmart everybody. Mahomes is minus 140 to throw two touchdown passes. And if he's going to, every single thing suggests a wide receiver will haul in at least one, if not both. Pro football today. Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Points scored in the fourth quarter of that Falcon Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and the Niners were shut out. Yep. So in the two biggest games of the two Super Bowls, one is a coordinator, one is a head coach. He hasn't scored a single point in the fourth quarter. <laughs> that if and I tell you what, if they don't on Sunday, they're not winning the game, bro. E exactly. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
I am Gabriel Morenci. We're kicking it live at the MGM Grand, straight from the Strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. Countdown to kickoff continues. People are having a great time here, despite the fact that the weather sucks. But you know what? If there's one place that, you know, that it doesn't matter, how many times have you been to Vegas and it's a beautiful day outside, but you're inside the casino anyway? So does it really matter what the weather is like uh, outside? Listen, Dahani Jones, it's crazy out here. We're right near the stadium. We're right in the middle of all this stuff. There's crazy traffic starting tonight. Like, I was just out there as well. It's like it's really starting to pick up out here. Dahani Jones, he's on the property, all right, people? <laughs> his, his, his management team are here. His people are here. He's on, he's on the property, but he's in, he's in the parking garage or whatnot. So we're going to bring Dahani on in a couple of minutes. But I caught up with an old friend of mine and an old friend of yours, an old friend of ours on the show. And I wasn't booked to, to, we weren't scheduled to have an interview. And I was like, what, Kyle Turley's here? I said, if anybody's going to interview Kyle Turley, it's going to be me. And me and Kyle Turley uh, break bread for the first time. It's been a long time, man, since Kyle has been on the show, especially me and him hanging out. We used to be like, you know, we used to hang out all the time. And we share some great stories. NFL legend Kyle Turley. We are throwing it down on Media Row in Las Vegas, Nevada. Countdown to kickoff is on. And I'll tell you what, we've met a lot of cool people this week. Brett Musburger was super cool. But I don't really get all that fired up. I'm old, I'm beaten down, and I'm jaded. But I'm effing fired up right now to catch up with a good friend of mine. It's been too long since we've done this on the air. The one and only Kyle Turley. Yeah. Oh, my Thank man. You, brother. I'm actually Appreciate super excited. You. People Good always ask me, how come Turley's not on every week with you? I said, he's busy, man. <laughs> he's, he's kicking too big ass. Now. He's huge. No, man. no, no. Nobody no, anymore. Man. Yeah, you're looking great, Kyle. I gotta say, you're Thank looking you, great. So how have you been, man? Man, I've been good. But busy, you know, just busy. Just everything. Life is great. Everything's moving forward, and just staying on it, man. From football to cannabis, it's been a, an awesome journey to music and everything else. You and I go way back. You were just talking about, man. I was coming on your show when like Gronk was a rookie and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Right, but yeah, he clicked yeah. over. I was on waiting on hold. I was waiting <laughs> for my, inter my first interview with you. I'm listening to this guy talk. I'm like, what did he even? I couldn't even understand what he just said. <laughs> no, he's like, I don't know, this guy Gronkowski has something. Man, so, but me and Kyle go way back. So, man, so many adventures that you've had. You and I spoke when you were on the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, you transitioned to tight end. Yeah. The music scene. Yeah. Man, your bands, your records, the tours. You've been there for all and, of it, brother. And you've always been a big advocate for former players and their health. And their, con and their concussions, the great iron greats. Yep. You and I always were big advocates for the legalization of marijuana and especially for medical treatment in professional sports. Yep. And here we are now in 2024. Who would have ever imagined, man, that you'd be promoting marijuana on Media Row? Right. We almost did it, brother. We, we pulled it off. We're there. And you, know, you were at the forefront of all this. Man, you know, it's been a long road, uh, uh, you know, since we started talking. You know, we talked about retired player issues yep. that were going on. That's what I think we both came together on. And I was trying to raise awareness. Yeah, I was right. The, with the things. Gridiron Greats. Yeah, with with Mike Ditka and that Don Shula. Exactly. And, and so, you know, from those efforts and then being in that uh, experience and then having to, you know, move back to California, I think it was like seven years or eight years later uh, from that interview, I moved back to California and had this experience in cannabis that saved my life. You know, cannabis truly saved my life. I haven't taken one, one pharmaceutical in, in almost Amazing. 10 years or more. And uh, that, uh, you know, an NFL football player that played 10 years at the offensive line position, all pro career, all these things. I see the guys limping around exactly. here, man. And I'm not. I I'll go take anybody's job. They can call me tomorrow and I'll be ready for the game on Sunday. <laughs> 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 That's real. So tell us about your your friendship and your partnership with the great Jim McMahon. And how, yeah. how did you guys become so tight? Yeah, Jim and I, you know, we, uh, I met Jim uh, in almost the same fashion. It was at a Gridiron Greats event in Indianapolis at the Super Bowl. And uh, Jim came on the bus. I was playing the event with my band. Yeah. I'd gone into music then. And Jim came on the bus. We burned one down and uh, really got to know I was a huge fan. I grew up Mormon, so, you know, Jim McMahon, BYU, <laughs> you know, the whole deal. So uh, I was like, oh, man, I got to the ultimate. <laughs> he's the ultimate Super Bowl badass, isn't oh, he? Oh, man, yeah? unreal. Like, if you think about yeah. Super Bowls, just a total... Goodness. 
you know, ass. Just this guy just kicked ass, didn't all he? Day, like, all day, <laughs> every day. And that's what's gonna be awesome about next year. We got uh, Super Bowl in New Orleans, where me, Ricky, and then Jim won his Super Bowls there in New Orleans. So it's gonna be awesome. Oh, I can't. So, Jim's just a lot of fun. What's it gonna be like in New Orleans, bro? It's gonna be off the chain, and that's my town. You know, we're gonna have a comedy show at a big theater. Jay Moore's coming. We're gonna put together an awesome comedy show in uh, remembrance of our old great friend, long lost Ralphie May, and. Uh, we got Emeralds going to be jumping in on board. We got all the other oyster houses that are going to jump on board with events. They're going to support the Gridiron Greats. We're going to have our own cannabis convention. Like you guys already got this year. lined up. You're yeah, ready to man. go, man. Huh? We're taking over. That's what's going to happen. I love it, though. You've been doing this for so long, and I remember taking over. You just rolled up. Remember, we went to a Charger Raider game. That's right. It was Carson Palmer's first game, and... You were, you know, you were hyping it up so big. We're coming to San Diego. Yeah. I remember, like, I, he told me. I said, I, mean, I didn't even tell the Chargers. I didn't, I'm just doing I this. I just showed up. <laughs> he just showed up, and the Chargers <laughs> like, all right, well, we can't say no. <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah, we threw down in the parking lot. I was doing the tailgate tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We threw yeah. down the parking lot, you know, around a bunch of oh, awesome. stadiums. Oh, it was uh, awesome. Oh, and that, that was so much fun. So, so tell us about the company specifically. And... Yeah. So the states, this is exactly what I asked you about, the states that you're legalized in. Yeah. So tell us, the Revenant MJ brand license and available in seven states, California, Arizona, Nevada, Oklahoma, um, Missouri, Illinois, and Michigan. Yeah, we started this about three years ago. Uh, you know, we've all been running respectively. Okay, so you're telling me industry. if somebody goes into a dispensary That's right. in Las Vegas here, they, they could ask for, for Revenant. Yeah, right, uh, we we just locked our licensing deal in Nevada, so pretty soon those, yeah, those yeah. products will be on the shelves with our great partners. But if you want to support uh, the greats, right. here's so this what you ask for the brand, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They'll be over at Hardeen and uh, uh, through a great partner of ours that runs a company called Matrix here in Nevada. Um, and all of our partners around the other states, they've been very inter- in- in- integral in helping us spread our message. That's our partnership. We need vested partners that are willing to help us get our message out. We help them. You know, we're getting on uh, USA Today. We're, we're, we're getting on all these TV shows shows we're getting on all these platforms to continue to the message we're, we're doing and these people are supporting us and able to use that to get to their people and consumers and uh, we got a whole hemp line of products people can order online at thegaspipe.net uh, go to thegaspipe.net we've got all the hemp products that, that uh, give euphoria experience and everything in cannabis they're just different strains of the same yeah. plant you know they want to separate these things and you know put racist names on them like marijuana when it's all cannabis <laughs> it's all hemp it's all hemp and you know, the Indian form versus the regular hemp. But, uh, you know, we're, we're out here pushing the envelope and, you know, giving people the opportunity to have the experience we've had in cannabis. And that's important because, I, I, again, I haven't taken one pill in 10 years. And if the plates and screws and bone-on-bone joint paint from all the surgeries isn't enough to, you, you know, tell the tale, uh, you know, have your own experience and you'll see for yourself. Is it better now from people you talk to with the National Football League? They've eased up on the... A little bit, a little, a bit. little bit, but not fully, right. right? To the point where, yeah, they stop where, suspending guys. That's it. That's it. They They're still finding guys. They up the level of THC allowance to the IOC level of 52 nanograms, which still didn't help Shakari Richardson, right? Yeah, yeah. She got, which uh, is ridiculous. Uh, ridiculous. And uh, and you know they still are hiding behind the Schedule One drug. That's why Jim and I are running for president. Are, There's some really key issues. So you guys are you're, you're running for president. You yeah, we are. are we, we started a political party called the Cannabis Freedom Party. Awesome. And uh, you know there needs to be a third party out here this two-party system is just obviously not working for anybody out here that's paying their taxes or just living in america i don't care if you're fresh and just came across or whatever it's not a good place right now with this two-party system we need a third-party injection and we, what are we going to do create the, the federalist party dig up george washington it's not going to happen right <laughs> man so what can change things and cannabis can change things you've got the the uh, uh passing of the safe banking act that needs to happen i went to new hampshire got in front of nikki haley got in front of dean phillips awesome the Trump rallies. So the same banking where you could do transactions, where you could do transactions with banks. Trillion dollars of unbankable cash sitting out here that belongs in our economy, and then the dropping of Schedule One, which is what the NFL hide behind. So let me ask you: If you had a chance to say Roger Goodell sitting here right now, we've got like one minute with this. Yeah. What would you tell Roger Goodell? What's your message to Roger Goodell? Uh, Stop testing for cannabis. Period. That's it. Everything will be fine. 
That's it. It's Point real blank, simple. Huh? It's real simple. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how you can have this experience that I've had. Ricky Williams, Jim McMahon, yeah. uh, Calvin Johnson spoke about this at the Hall of Fame, you know, uh, and used his platform. If it's not enough for us, you know, he didn't play it down. He didn't put his finger in the dirt in the NFL. He didn't get all the injuries. He was a gold brick and politician kid that got his yeah. opportunity carrying uh, Pete Rosell's coffee around. I sat in meetings with this man. He's placated me. He wants to side with all these people and do all these things. Well, he needs to answer to the players because the players are the people who pay his $30 million a year salary and uh, very very soon that's going to come uh, back to roost uh, you know for these people if they continue to neglect the players and allow this union to to control the players instead of give to the players what they need to and what they know should help I mean I shouldn't have one money one dollar in the stock market should all be invested in this industry hey, it's up to Period. the union as well I never forget no, how I, I remember the problem, everything the union I remember you told me years ago when you were fighting for concussion rights and money, you told me, man, the modern players give us more of a problem than the league does, actually. Yeah, it's the union. 100% like really, the huh? union. Yeah. Uh, you know, the owners are business owners, and, and they have a union that they have to negotiate with. Yeah. And those people at the head of that, DeMarie Smith, needs to be fired, period. Um, and uh, the executive committee needs to go to uh, players only that have split contracts because those are the only guys that can give an honest answer in the room to help what needed to be done in the NFL. Not these quarterbacks, not these star offensive linemen like I was. I was one of the only ones that was trying to fight for things to get better. And now you have guys in the NFL playing that are making less money than college football players and less money than the new Manning kid that's just come out of high school, right? All right, $3 million to uh, whatever his name Manning is, right? Yeah, uh, yeah Arch Manning. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know, whatever. Yeah. And from here on, you know, with the NIL money, whatever Manning Manning it is, is going to get $3 million, of course, right? And you got guys playing the NFL that are making less than that. It's a shame. It's a travesty. The league needs to make an intervention, get rid of the NFLPA, allow the players to invest in the NFL 100% with all their money, and continue to grow this league. Legalize cannabis, it's all fixed. The great Kyle Turley. Kyle, we've got about a minute to, on the way out here. Are you friends with anybody on, on the teams here? Man, I've still got some people in Kansas City, but, you know. Uh, Who do you think wins? Oh, man, I'm going for my Chiefs, of course. I got my yellow, got my red on today, brother. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> it yeah, I just think they're the better team. I mean, they're they're the more seasoned team. I mean, for, for the Niners to win, you know, Brock Purdy is going to have to be pretty Purdy on Sunday. <laughs> 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 my man, we got to do this. Always, always man. So it's Thank great you. catch up. We're, we're not going to take so long to have him on again. <laughs> We'll definitely do this before next year's media row. The one and only and the awesome Kyle F. and Turley, everybody. We're kicking it live from media row, Super Bowl, Las Vegas. Awesome stuff with Kyle Turley, man. He was uh, he was throwing fastballs. Once I uh, thinks that the more Smith should be uh, fired, and it really is amazing, isn't it, that the more things change, the more they stay the same uh, when it comes to the National Football League and the, the relationship with the PA and the players. Like, no no other league's players get dominated with the collective bargaining agreements and their contracts as much as National Football League players do, except it's similar to mixed martial artists that complain that they don't make enough money when they're the ones that keep on accepting the money and signing the contracts. Very similar situation with the, with the NFL. NFL players don't stick together, all right? They talk about a brotherhood and stuff. Like, NBA players actually all put in money for a fund and for the future, and they take care of each other and stuff. They're like, yeah, whatever. I'm making so much. Yeah, here's a mil. I'll give you 100K, right? They, NFL players, they don't, they don't roll like that. And that's a problem, and that's why they have so many issues later in life. This team has been capable of overcoming deficits until this season. 
In 2023, the Kansas City Chiefs are 2-4 and four when they trail by more than 7 points at any point in the game. And the only two comeback wins that they have are over backup quarterbacks that do not have a lot of experience. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. I'm digging deep, fellas. I'm digging deep. Christian McCaffrey minus 220. Donnie, how could you do that? The price point is way out of control in this. Keep it simple. The goal is to win money, not to outsmart everybody. Mahomes is minus 140 to throw two touchdown passes. And if he's going to, every single thing suggests a wide receiver will haul in at least one, if not both. Pro Football Today, only on SportsGrid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. points scored in the fourth quarter of that Falcon Super Bowl mm -hmm. and the Niners were shut out. Yep. So in the two biggest games of Kyle, the two Super Bowls, one is a coordinator, one is a head coach, he hasn't scored a single point in the fourth quarter. That, if they, I tell you what, if they don't on Sunday, they're not winning the game, bro. Exactly. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Let's do this thing. I am Gable Morenci. We're kicking it live at the MGM Grand, straight from the Strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're just a uh, punt, a kick, and a pass away from Allegiant Stadium uh, right now. Countdown to kickoff continues. Vegas is really starting to fill up. Listen, there's been a party all week long, uh, but now that the game is approaching and the weekend is approaching, it's not cheap to hang out here all week. So you got to understand a lot of, like, nine, especially Niner fans, all right, there's a lot more Niner fans than Chief fans, like on the strip and hanging around. And a lot of people aren't going to be going to the game. You know, the game tickets, we should note the tickets are down to about $6,000 uh, right now. Only $6,000, which means you'll probably be able to get in for about five dimes uh, when it's all said and done. So if you're spending five dimes to get into the game, let me give you some picks uh, to help you pay for those tickets. All right, let's start, you know, we've, we've, let's talk about Mahomes. We haven't talked a lot about Mahomes. Everybody does all the time, but his over-under uh, touchdown passing prop is one and a half uh, in this game. You've got to lay some juice, obviously, to do it. Seven of the last nine playoff games, he has thrown two or more uh, touchdown passes. And I said it earlier, even though I do believe that the San Francisco 49ers are going to win this football game, it doesn't mean I don't think that Kansas City aren't going to score some touchdowns, right? Is Travis Kelsey going to get into the end zone? It seems too obvious, but probably, yeah. Only Mahomes, Rice, and Kelsey have scored touchdowns uh, in the playoffs. That's kind of a problem for them. Somebody else is going to need to step up. But, but, you know, one thing with Mahomes, too, he does like the shovel passes and, you know, the little gadget plays from the one-yard line. A lot of teams as well, it's almost automatic. They're going to they're gonna run the ball in a certain situation. How many times have you seen the quick hitch to, to Kelsey? He just snaps the ball, boom, and Kelsey falls forward into the end zone. I am going to be betting Patrick Mahomes over one and a half touchdown uh, passes in this football game. So speaking of uh, Super Bowls, we're going to be joined by a man in a couple of minutes that played in the Super Bowl, national champion with the Michigan Wolverines, entrepreneur. I look at him like the Dosecki's guy. He's like, like the most interesting man in the world. 
reality TV shows, goes all over the world, plays new sports, philanthropist, national champion, the one and only, the Hani Jones joins us right here at the MGM Grand. Let's rock. Thanks for coming, man. What's that? I got my own podcast. Oh. Clear kicking it live at MGM Grand. Don't you? Things are starting to uh, get lit here on the strip, man. We're <laughs> count, count down to kick. People are all over the place. You saw that, the honey, man. You saw that. Hey, you you're, getting, you're getting accosted. You're man, getting accosted. Welcome to my life. I, I, think, I think everybody's on their way to the restaurant. No, no, no. Yeah. They're on their way to the sports book. They're able to put their money down for this game coming up. Yeah, you see what the life of a, uh, a radio and television <laughs> host. Something that you know something about, actually, though. And I said to me, though, you really are. You're like the, the, the uh, Dos Equis. No, I appreciate they, they that. They should have had you in no, the commercial. No, let me tell you something about Dos Equis. I actually saw that commercial, and I thought it was me. That's what I thought. That commercial came out, and yeah, that was me. I, tra- I travel around the world, and then all of a sudden you see this guy, Jonathan Goldstein, <laughs> who is like the Dos Equis most interesting man of the world. And I'm like, did Jonathan just take my job, and yeah, I didn't yeah, even yeah. know about it? I don't know how. You know, you got to speak to your people about that and how you, you didn't get that gig, man. Uh, but thanks so much for taking the time to be Thank with you. us here. There's a ton of stuff I want to throw at you, especially as a lifelong Michigan Wolverine fan. We're sitting next to a national champion uh, right here. But uh, let's start off with uh, with Cafe Momentum. You and I spoke uh, last year on Media Row in Phoenix, and I think in L.A., uh, about criminal justice reform. This oh, is one man. of the things that's very important to you uh, with this foundation. So uh, talk to me about are things better than the last time we spoke? Oh, I, I think we've got a lot of problems in our country, and that's what Stand Together really focuses on, trying to find the way to fix some of our country's biggest problems, and in particular, criminal justice reform is a is a, a, an a, a amazing topic to be discussed, but an amazing problem to be solved. And so CAF and Momentum really works to do that justice involved youth that are at-risk at youth um, that have come out of the juvenile justice system that work alongside so many others that have also been out as well in order to kind of find their way through Cafe Momentum. And it started in Dallas, Texas as a place in Pittsburgh, also in Nashville, Tennessee, soon to be places like so Denver. Like, it's literally cafe. Yeah, it's an actual. And the employees are It is are an actual kids, restaurant. Yeah, kids that have been given a second chance. Right, exactly. And the food is great, too. Right. And, and the food is fantastic. And these kids get to learn a skill. They look get to learn that people believe in them. And they become empowered, right? And so their second chance becomes their second opportunity to do something even greater with themselves. And that's that's really the power. And so um, Stand Together Foundation, Players Coalition, then also the NFL are big supporters. And if you could tell some of the cities that we're affiliated with, that's where exactly it is. So we've been at Radio Row and been feeding people all day and hoping people could interview some of the kids, and the ambassadors, if you will, and hear their stories. Yeah, and there really are great stories. So why, what, what made you so passionate about this? Because you do have a lot of stuff uh, going on. But you really do care about this. Because well, like, right? some people are here, they want to be here, right? A lot yeah. of guys act like they don't like the interviews and stuff. I see them walking around Media Road. They live for it every year. Right. You actually, you have a real message. You're not just pimping a beer or something Well, well like I'll, that. Tell you, I'll tell you this. <laughs> Look, Lloyd Carr at the University of Michigan always said, it's not about you, it's about something greater than yourself. And when I, when I encountered and I got to know the Stand Together organization, I started to see all the different problems that they were solving, criminal justice being one of them, Cafe Munson being a product of um, working towards criminal justice reform. And so when I start to think about my world of philanthropy and those that I want to work with and those that I want to help change lives and change the world, that it, it, became, it, it became a part of me because that's how I've always lived my life. Lloyd Carr gave me that opportunity to teach me that. My parents gave me that too, and I try to push that forward. Uh, Dahani Jones uh, joining us uh, right now. So, you know, giving kids a second chance is uh, so important. And when you see, you see the growth and you see the success of this, is this what just, you know, for people tuning in, I wanted to ask you, it's like for, for people tuning in right now, wonder right, what, what can I do? I guess is don't be so ju- judgmental of people, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Don't be so judgmental. Well, I think, I give think, people a chance. I think it's always important. Because we've to, all done dumb things as well, kids. Well, look, we've, we've all done dumb things, and we've also all had second chances. Sometimes our yeah. second chances don't look the same, and we go back to our old ways, and that's the power of Cafe Momentum. It allows you to change 
that momentum. And so I think it's always important to read the full story, right? Read the full story. Read someone's full history. Get to know somebody. Be a friend to someone that's had some challenges in their life and give them an opportunity. Don't just look at them and say, okay, well, they're a problem that, you know, that needs to go away. They're a problem that, you know, we can work towards solving. And it's not just one person. It's several people. And you can see the success of, of Cafe Momentum because it's not just in places where it started, right? Yeah, it started, We're growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right? And so, what cities now? Because you said so you have, in Dallas, Texas. You have Dallas, right? Pittsburgh, Nashville. That's you have awesome. soon to be places Across like Atlanta, too, yeah. Atlanta and Denver, and hopefully in places like Baltimore and Houston. So it's growing quite, quite rapidly. And, you know, we've served over, over, over 1,000 kids, yeah, that's Over a awesome. thousand kids have come through this program. It's a 12-month program of which people get the kids get paid. They become bus boys and bus girls, bus people, and then all of a sudden, you know, they go. Some of them are on the line. Chefs. I know. Right. I've they're they're to chefs, somebody's line and stuff. Yeah, food yeah, yeah, prep, yeah, exactly. and then working with the working with the clientele. So you're really teaching a skill. Like I said, it's about being empowered. It's about believing in yourself and people believing in you. So were you like this? Is it was? Did you get this stuff from your parents? Or you mentioned Lloyd Carr. Did Lloyd Carr have this much of an influence on your life uh, well, I, as, I, as a man and not so much a football coach? Well, I think it's, I, I think it's uh, what's great about this week, right? You know, the culmination of these two teams playing in the Super Bowl. They couldn't have played in the Super Bowl had they not been teams. They could not have played in the Super Bowl had they not been teams that rose above individual selfishness to be selfless. Right. Yeah. And so when I think about Lloyd Carr and talking about it's not about you, it's about something greater than yourself, the teams and the, uh, and the effect go hand in hand. And that's why the value of Cafe Momentum matches so much of how I think and hopefully so many of the other cities of which Cafe Momentum is going into. And Seattle Seahawk legend and Alabama's, Alabama Crimson Tide uh, superstar Sean Alexander has been he works very hard with this as well. Big part, oh, he's, isn't it? You know, uh, Sean Alexander was one of the first guys this, that introduced me to the entire Stand Together community. Really? And so allowed me to, to, to know. How you got, you right, got no. So was it Sean well, Alexander? Sean, Sean, Sean uh, introduced me to the, to the community, but I will say this. You know, I, I've worked, I make bow ties for causes and, <laughs> and supporting, you know, underprivileged youth in education. And when I thought about scale and I, I thought about overall global and, and you know, full-on, you know, uh, impact, I always thought about, like, where was the big organization that worked with big nonprofits that were helping things around health care, education, yeah. criminal justice? That's what Stand Together ultimately became. And so, um, actually, during COVID, we raised a bunch of money and gave a bunch of money away because there were so many people financially affected due to COVID-19. And so you think about these big problems, but you think about how you can incrementally solve them with people that are uniquely joined together and under a common ideal of thought and can focus on changing these paradigms so that we can ultimately solve the biggest problems. What's the reception from the NFL like? Oh, huge. What, that's what, Players Coalition. Yeah, so Players like, Coalition but, but is actually heavily league, involved. Can they, can, they, can, they, can they, like, the support that you're getting? Yeah, the, the, the young people growing the, right the, now? The players that are involved in Players Coalition are involved in Cafe Momentum. So imagine there's events. almost a guy on every NFL team and multiple guys that would, would say, hey, bro, you know, I want to We need to have a Cafe Momentum right here. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And then, and, then, and then you could also be an advocate as well. So I think it's about being an advocate. I think it's about being a contributor. But I think most importantly, it's about spending time with the young people. All right. We got Dahani Jones uh, with us for a couple of more minutes. We're going to take a quick break uh, coming up here. And I want to get his take on what it's like playing in the Super Bowl, what he thinks about the Super Bowl being played in Las Vegas. Although the players are out in Lake Las Vegas. Did you hear, like, there's coyotes attacking people out there and stuff, huh? <laughs> They were worried about players getting in trouble on the strip. They're getting attacked by coyotes. I, ho I hope they have some uh, animal animal catchers out there. <laughs> All right. We're breaking it down here at the MGM Grand, straight from the strip of Las Vegas, Nevada. We're going to be here one more night uh, tomorrow night from 5 to 7 Las Vegas time. We've had a great time. We had Kyle Turley. Now we've got the Hottie Jones. We're rolling here, baby. Let's do it in space.
This team has been capable of overcoming deficits until this season. In 2023, the Kansas City Chiefs are two and four when they trail by more than seven points at any point in the game. And the only two comeback wins that they have are over backup quarterbacks that do not have a lot of experience. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. I'm digging deep, fellas. I'm digging deep. Christian McCaffrey minus 220. Donnie, how could you do that? The price point is way out of control in this. Keep it simple. The goal is to win money, not to outsmart everybody. Mahomes is minus 140 to throw two touchdown passes. And if he's going to, every single thing suggests a wide receiver will haul in at least one, if not both. Pro football today. Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. points scored in the fourth quarter of that Falcon Super Bowl mm -hmm. and the Niners were shut out. Yep. So in the two biggest games of Kyle, the two Super Bowls, one is a coordinator, one is a head coach, he hasn't scored a single point in the fourth quarter. That, if they, I tell you what, if they don't, on Sunday, they're not winning the game, bro. Exactly. It's smarter to be on sports grid. I am Gabriel Morenci. Welcome back to Sports Grid's coverage of Super Bowl 58 from Las Vegas, Nevada. As I stated, man, we're just like a, a punt, a kick, and a pass away from Allegiant Stadium. We're playing um, uh, Sunday, of course, Super Bowl 58, but we're joined by a man that played in a Super Bowl before and actually played with Coach Andy Reid, Dahani Jones with us. And Donnie, you've had the opportunity to really play for some awesome coaches and some pretty nice people in Lloyd Carr and Andy Reid. What can you tell? We got chief fans that are filing through all night and stuff. Uh, what can you tell people? Oh, well, I, I would say this. The great thing about Andy Reid is he always sticks to his script. You know, someone asked me the question earlier, like, what, what makes Andy Reid and, and Steve Spagnuolo really click? Well, they've worked together before. They're very different. They seem to they, be different they, personalities. No, they're very, very different personality. But I would say that the tree yeah. is Andy Reid. You know, the branches, yeah. right, become, you know, people like Steve Spagnolo, And, you know, you, you, you just start to think about the different people that have come from his process. And so they're on the same page. And I think it's interesting how you kind of go from the NFC to the AFC. And then all of a sudden the success that you didn't have becomes a success that you do have. And I've always appreciated the way that Andy has played the game because the fact that he's going to do what he wants to do all the time he wants to do it. Right. Win, lose or draw. And. You know, for a while, he got to the NFC Championship, yeah. and then he lost. Now he gets to the AFC Championship, and he wins, and he goes to the Super Bowl, and he wins, right? So is this a, is this ridiculous when we hear about coaches? Like, I'm a Buffalo Bill fan. And we're like, Sean McDermott can't win the big game. And he Which, by the way, part of the tree. Yeah, part was, of the tree. Yeah. Look, he was, he was, he was the um, defensive back. Um, coach, when he was Steve, yeah, yeah. Spagnolo was the linebacker coach, and Jim Johnson was the defensive so coordinator. You know all these dudes, right? Well, You're looking I, at all these coaches. I'm, I'm, I'm like, looking at the I entire league guys, right yeah. now. Either I played with someone that's a coach, or I, I either I played with someone that was a coach, 
I played for someone that might have been my position coach that eventually became a coach or someone that's still a coach. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about how many years it's been since I've been coming back and forth to the Super Bowl and hanging out and just, you know, taking in all the sights. I mean, I've been doing it for 24 years, getting to play in two Super Bowls. I mean, it's it's amazing. And, and, and sometimes people ask me, you know what? Do you ever think you want to coach? I don't know. If Antonio called me... <laughs> I, I might take that really, phone call. Really, huh? Yeah. So we got some little breaking news. So that's the one guy, AP. So you I, I just, I, look, the I, guys I, love him that much. Is that the thing, man? You want to run through a wall for I, this guy? Well, I, I, I think that this new strategy that some of the coaches are, are buying into and some of the ownership is really leaning on in terms of former players becoming these coaches, right? Because look at this division, bro. Right? This is the heavy. You got Harbaugh coming in. Right. You got Sean Payton. Former player. And you got right. Andy Reid. Right. And then you got AP. Bringing that Raider attitude, right? I, I think he lives and breathes the way that the Raider Nation is going to essentially support him, and you know the family is going to let him do what he wants to do. And you got you got Marvin Lewis. Marvin Lewis was my head coach when I was at the Bengals, right? And then you know there's probably some other people that are in the works that are about to be on the list or on the ground right here in Las Vegas. So I'm excited to come back and watch him and su and support him too. And the fact that players love playing for him, that's the kind of guy that you want to work for. What do you think? There's so much I want to ask, and time is flying by here. What do you think about uh, Coach Harbaugh? First things first, how did it feel as someone that actually had been there and done it to see Michigan back on top again? First of all, Michigan's always on top. <laughs> <laughs> so, someone said Michigan had a drought. I was like, what kind of drought? We've never had a drought before in our life. It's, it's Michigan. We don't, we don't have droughts. All we but do I is wanna, essentially win. I want to say, though, and I'm no, we allowed other people to enjoy. You just waited for the our, drama our, here. Yeah, we, we allowed other people to enjoy what we've always enjoyed, which is success. And, you know, that's what's amazing about, about Michigan. But the fact that we won a national championship after 25 years, my team being the last one that won the national championship, you know, guys on the team like Greasy and Brady and Woodson and Hutchinson. I mean, so many Hall of Famers. Yeah. I, I, maybe I was like, I'm not on the ballot yet, but maybe. <laughs> no, no. But, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's amazing at the fact of what Harbaugh was able to do. And I think in the end, it was a win-win scenario for everybody, right? So there's no, it's kind of, you can't resent him for leaving, right? Why? He's living his he, got what, he got what we wanted. Yeah. We got what we wanted. And Coach Moore got what he wanted, too. Yeah. So now you have an amazing coach that's coming in that I think towards the end was, this, well, obviously because Harbaugh was out, he couldn't coach, right? So Coach Moore coached. And then that set him up. And I think, I think Harbaugh actually let him coach more than probably people saw. I agree. Throughout the national Johnny, championship run, I, I don't think he. I don't think Harbaugh really did that much. Look how many coordinators that Harbaugh went through. We went through over the years too. And look what like Moore came up as a tight ends coach, right? Right. Like Western Kentucky. That just shows you it doesn't matter where you essentially you come from, right? As long as someone believes in you, yeah. you can all of a sudden find your way, just like those kids at Cafe Momentum. And Coach Moore now is in that leadership position that I think he's much that he's much deserved and and I'm willing to support him. I want to I want to make sure I back him and get everybody else a part of the you know the University of Michigan crew as we always do to make sure that he's successful. I hope Car I hope Harbaugh is successful as well. Like I said, he got what he wanted and now that asterisk of it being too long for us to win the national championship Done. has been removed and now we have the national championship. So you've run out of the tunnel for for Super Bowls, you've run out of the tunnel national champion. There wasn't the playoffs then, but it was in the Rose Bowl against Washington State. Me just sitting in the stadium, I was at the Alabama-Michigan game. I got goosebumps still right now. You were now. down there at the Orange Bowl? Uh, oh, you're talking about this oh, year. Oh, not the one with oh, see, no, not the sorry, no, no, I sorry. See, this is what happened. This is what happened. The MVP that's, that's, called a, I know. that's called a senior moment. Yeah, that's yeah, called yeah, a senior yeah. moment. Going back to the time of which I was in yeah. the Orange Bowl, yeah. that was the last time that Michigan played against Alabama. And Tom Brady won the MVP. There it is. Yeah, I'm okay. on top of it, man. So I know there was a reason for it. But what was it like? Just I'm getting goosebumps that night, you know, watching and McCarthy and the, the emotion after. Out of all the stadiums you played in, what was it like playing the Rose Bowl? What's the memory? Is it one of the coolest experiences? Oh, I, I, I think... It's different depending upon the type of player that you are. You can only be hyped for so long before you start to come down from it. And you need to be able to rise throughout the Tough entire game, later. right? Yeah, yeah. So for me, I was always the person that just was that steady burn. And then you slowly escalate. So I remember towards the end of the game, right? Remember Ryan Leaf was making the play to come back. I forgot how many seconds or how many minutes it was for them to score or try to score. And then, you know, and we ended up winning the game. So I remember how the, the game sharply 
escalated. And all of a sudden, you know, your heart's beating out of your chest. You're just like, I just got to get the guy down. I got to get the ball down. You know, I got to make sure that the clock runs out and we win this game. So it was less emotion coming out of the tunnel and more emotion going into Closing out and winning the game. Awesome stuff. I'm getting goosebumps right now. I can't believe we've only got two minutes left with you right now. This is crazy. I thought about this, and I wanted to ask you this. Brock Purdy, a lot of people want to take, take, take him down, and, you know, he ain't this, he ain't that. He just got here. Uh, is this, Give him some time. But I was going to say, Brian Greasy, probably one of the more underappreciated winning quarterbacks as well. I mean, he was a baller. Tom Brady was actually the backup, right, on, on the championship team. What's your take? We've got, like, a minute and a half, two minutes here. What's your take on this game right now? And who do you like? Who do you think wins and why? Well, there's one thing that someone asked me before. What's a question that nobody has asked? Or r really, what's, the, what's an aspect of the game that nobody's really talking about, right? Yeah. And that's the difference between these two. The, it, it really comes down to this guy hasn't had time in the Super Bowl. This guy has had time in the Super Bowl. And so I think that one of the things that we don't really cover or don't really talk about is that the experience of the Super Bowl is not like a playoff game. It's not it's like different. a regular season game. It's definitely not like when you a wake up that game. Sunday morning. Is it like, oh man, like this is real now? Well, it, <laughs> it's it's been building, but I'm actually talking about the confines of the game itself. Yeah, yeah. When you go out onto the field, there are so many things that are happening before the game. You can't go out on the field hyped because you'll go down. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden you get into the game and you might come out flat. The same thing happens Sounds during halftime. Sounds like a UFC fighter, like an MMA fighter, man. It can't you you, you got to yeah. stick with it the entire time. Look, even halftime is longer. The commercials are longer. Everything is longer. So this guy has experience. This guy doesn't. And that's the thing that edges them for me versus the 49ers. Dahani, you're a class act. I always love catching up with you, man. I can keep, um, Make sure everybody goes to uh, cafemomentum.org slash Super Bowl and you can learn about it. Hey, great stuff. It's a great organization. They're doing a great work. You're a class act. Uh, thanks so much for your time, my man. Thank you. All right. Our coverage continues live from the MGM Grand Super Bowl 58. Countdown to kickoff continues. And, man, everybody that's won and played in the NFL, I'll say you can't get in front of Patrick Mahomes. All right. We're going to give you some picks and props on the other side. Uh, we've got uh, Bob Marjanovic going to join us as well. Detroit Lenny in the house. Let's do this thing. This team has been capable of overcoming deficits until this season. In 2023, the Kansas City Chiefs are 2-4 and four when they trail by more than 7 points at any point in the game. And the only two comeback wins that they have are over backup quarterbacks that do not have a lot of experience. It's smarter to be on sports grid. I'm digging deep, fellas. I'm digging deep. Christian McCaffrey minus 220. Donnie, how could you do that? The price point is way out of control in this. Keep it simple. The goal is to win money, not to outsmart everybody. Mahomes is minus 140 to throw two touchdown passes. And if he's going to, every single thing suggests a wide receiver will haul in at least one, if not both. Pro football today. Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Point scored in the fourth quarter of that Falcons Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and the Niners were shut out. Yep. So in the two biggest games of Kyle, the two Super Bowls, one is the coordinator, one is the head coach. He hasn't scored a single point in the fourth quarter. 
That if they, I tell you what, if they don't on Sunday, they're not winning the game, bro. Exactly. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Let's roll. We're kicking it live at the MGM Grand, straight from the strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. Shout out to Dahani Jones, who is just with us. And super cool, super nice guy, class act. This guy really has like done it all. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna share something with you. As soon as we we ended, as soon as we ended the hit, he looks at his cell phone. He goes, "Damn." He goes, "Man, Sam Altman needs like seven uh, seven trillion dollars for." <laughs> and, and I almost appreciate him kind of knowing, you know, thinking, assuming I would be smart enough for the conversation. And I said, what, the AI guy? Yeah, the, the artificial intelligence guy. Like, literally, the second he's off, he's, like, looking at the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, he wasn't, you know what I mean? He wasn't looking at selfies. He wasn't looking at his, you know, the Wall Street Journal. Uh, uh, man, so the honey jumps. It's super cool for me, especially as a Michigan fan. Like I said, somebody asked me, it was Kevin Walsh earlier in the day today asked me, he said, Marenzi, who do you get so, you know, have you been excited to meet anybody or, and stuff? And I told him it's, it's, it's not like a bigger name, people. It's sort of random with me. Like one of the highlights of my week this week was uh, meeting Brent Musburger. Like I said, I've spoken to a bunch of NFL legends and stuff, but to me, Brent Musburger, I was like, man, that's pretty cool. I just met Brent Musburger. Uh, met Austin Eckler today. Spencer Rattler today, actually, met. Really nice uh, guy, Spencer Rattler. We wish him the best of luck. International Football League, he uh, killed it at the Senior Bowl. And I think I think Rattler, I think this kid, this kid's a gamer. He's a baller. All right. So let's get back to some picks right now. And shout out to Dahani Jones. Great stuff talking to a national champion, the Michigan Wolverines, baby. So speaking of uh, Michigan, let's bring in Detroit Lenny uh, in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's What's all, up, it's all man? blue here, baby. This ain't no Spartan show. <laughs> it's all blue. You know, you saw we had the Honey Jones national champion, baby. I, 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 with all due respect, go green, go white. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right. Get him out of security. <laughs> get him out of here. Uh, Fair all kidding aside, great to see you. Thanks a lot yeah, man. for coming down. Thanks for having me. How's uh, You live here now. Yeah. Originally from Detroit, but you, you've lived here for years now. Uh, how's your Super Bowl week uh, been so far? What do you think of the, the Super Bowl in your hometown right now. Too bad the Lions are here. <sighs> That's the only thing that could have been better. I'll be honest with you is if my Lions would have been here, but whatever. It, this is great. This is great for the city. I mean, I live about 20, 30 minutes away from Go Lions. I see you uh, from, uh, from, from downtown and even out into the local platform, the local bars, everywhere you yeah. go, local restaurants. It's great, I'm sure, for just the economy, but Everywhere you go, there's a it's, buzz, isn't it's, it? It's, it's a vibe. Of, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. vibe, man. Yeah, and you, yeah. it's, it's hard. It's infectious. And yeah. the Super Bowl is always infectious down in Vegas, but now it's here. I heard you talking about this the other day. You know, it's a it's a drive and an eight iron away. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, really, it's right. You know, it's an Uncle Rico touchdown pass. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It really is crazy because I've done shows for years in Vegas during the Super Bowl, right? Like Super right. Bowl weekend. It used to be the thing. Or the uh, the big game, all right. Yeah. So you know, as it's called, the big game parties, yeah. etc. So going back, bro, like years and years, and Vegas is always the place that you want to be Super Bowl weekend. There used to always Absolutely. be a UFC. There's UFC cards. There's boxing matches. You get your bets. You go to the the, the sports books and the and the, the big game parties and all that. But now it's crazy that. The game is actually here, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just back, feels weird. You know, back in the day, like you mentioned, I used to remember going with a couple buddies, and we'd go to the Imperial Palace, which yeah, is yeah, not yeah. even here no more, but whatever. And it was just like, you know. And you look forward to it. Oh, great uh, time. Super Bowl weekend. Dollar hot yeah, dogs, yeah, yeah. dollar beers, and you're good. You know, no, it, it used to be the thing, right? No, remember, absolutely. Remember it would be the thing. I don't want to go to the Super Bowl. I'm going to Vegas. Yeah. I'd rather be in Vegas. Now, 
it's what, all the same spot. Let's go. Oh, oh these guys, these oh, guys. Oh. Speaking of security. Oh. Oh. Let's go, Niners! Niners! Hey, hey, for all of our, for all of our viewers, if you don't believe me that Niner <laughs> fan is owning the strip, baby. They are here Niners, in full baby. effect. Ain't no Chiefs. All the Chief fans are up in their room sleeping already. That's Niner fine. fans getting ready to party. <laughs> Chiefs money line. Let's go. Oh, uh, okay. no, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, actually, See, we were just talking about the buzz in the city. And it's just a vibe. Like that, right? The crew yeah. goes through, man. Everyone's fired up. They're know? everywhere. And, and I hate to, I don't, listen, they're here. You earned it, San Francisco fans. You earned it. And more power to you. But, you know, if the ball doesn't fall off somebody else's face mask, you're probably not here. But All whatever. Right, so you're uh, you're going to have to separate your lion bitterness here. I know. I'm a little it. bitter. But wasn't that really unbelievable? Because that was like the turning point. Ridiculous. That was the turning point. Yeah. Because Momentum. Leading up to that point. Brock Purdy was struggling. Yeah. Like every ball he threw, there wasn't a lot of zip on it. You know what he reminded me of, Lenny? He looked like a pitcher that was sort of guiding it. Like he had lost his confidence. Right. And he was sort of like lobbing these passes in. And then they go deep. And I'm like, there's no way they're going to go deep. They go yeah. deep. It was such a bad pass. It was closer. Like there were a bunch of lines there. <laughs> it was nowhere. Was it Ayuk? I think yeah. it was nowhere near Ayuk. Yeah. It hits. It was Ayuk. Yeah. It hits him in the face <laughs> and bounces right to Ayuk. It's unbelievable. Like only Buffalo or Detroit. And I'm a Bills fan. Only that would happen to you or I. Trust. I was just gonna say every Lions fan that watched that went, oh, of course. You know, oh, I mean, you saw just, that you knew. Yeah, that. oh, you knew right away. Was I was like, I looked at my buddy. We were at a, a local bar having a beer and whatever, watched the game. And I looked at him and I go, Oh, we're going to lose this game, twenty-seven to twenty-four. And he said, No, it's going to be thirty-one to thirty, because we oh, yeah, deserve yeah. to lose that bad. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my god! And we 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 saw this happening. And hats off to Niners fans. I I I love it. I I love it. I'm all over the Chiefs, but again, I'm probably just bitter. But whatever. Uh. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We've spoken to a lot of NFL players this week. We just had another one on. Yeah. Played in Super Bowls and won championships. And Dahani Jones. And he said the difference is to him the experience. He said he thinks Brock Purdy is a great young quarterback. But Mahomes, this is his fourth Super Bowl. Right. And he played in two Super Bowls, Dahani. Yeah. So it's nice to get the perspective of a guy to play. And he only said, he goes, dude, he said, bro, this isn't, he said, it's not like a playoff game even. No. He said, you don't know. It's a different app. You don't know until you're there. Yeah. And a lot of points he brought up from a player's perspective. He goes, you, you're you not in your same routine. He goes, you can't even go on the field before the game because there's people on the field. Absolutely. Um, he talked about the halftime being so long. And yeah. That throws him off. That's a big he talked deal. about the commercials. He said, the commercials are longer. Everything's longer. He said, it's a different experience. That if So it wasn't like so much. Oh, the nerves. It was just like, it's a different style of game to play it. I, I, I've been telling people all week, it's like Brock Purdy, and I mean this with all due respect, is a great game manager. Patrick Mahomes is also a great game manager, but so he's you're, also you're, a playmaker. You're, you're part of the Brock Purdy. He's only a game manager. I'm, I'm okay with that. I think, yeah. it, I think if you want to do what you do and win the NFC Championship and be in a Super Bowl, you need somebody who can be a game manager. The difference is, is... Patrick Mahomes is that and then some. And he's been there, the experience, and you just his resume is different. It's just the bottom line. All things being equal, the resume is different. Andy Reid, Kyle Shanahan. I'm going to take Andy Reid every time. And, you know, Kyle Shanahan's been here before. You know what's interesting? I brought this up as far as the numbers are concerned and rematches. This is the eighth rematch in Super Bowl history. Or, or yeah. I should say the, not a rematch, but the same matchup right. of teams. The team that won the first time has won five times. All right? Okay. And as far as coaches are concerned, it's only happened where the same coaches go head-to-head -head in a Super Bowl. And both times, the coach that won the first time won as well. Okay. So you're leaning with Kansas City here. I am. What kind of pace of tempo of game are you looking at? You think, you, you know, we talked about a 27-24 game. Yeah. I actually think that's the ballpark. I'm in that, that range as far as the final score is concerned. But the, 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 the total is very polarizing, right? I mean, Casey's defense is so good. 18 and 2 to the under in right. second halves, 19 and 1 to the under in fourth quarters. What do you think about the total? I, I, I leaned over 
because I think at the end of the day, Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs are going to resort back to what they know great, and that's playing backyard football. Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, when routes break off, he's just going to sit down, and they're going to get chunk yardage plays. I think they will control the clock, but I see this probably squeaking over. I don't, I'm not a fan of the total to be honest with you. I'm just, I'm not, I think it's like, I think the number's pretty set on it. Yeah. I think it's right there. But it, it is a very sharp number. It is a very sharp they number. They did their job. Like, if you think about it, they couldn't make it, if they made it 49 or something, people would have bet the under. The Sharps would have bet the under. Right. If they made it 45 and a half, they're going over. the Super Bowl, I would have <laughs> came hand over fist. All right. Take yeah, my money. Hand. Yeah. Yeah, so, the, and it's funny because we had Ted Savransky, Teddy Covers on earlier in the week here. Mm -hmm. And he said, Marenzi, what do you think is the script here, basically? And I said, I said, you know, five touchdowns and four field goals. You know what that gets us to? 47. 47. And I actually like the over. Ah, but see? I'm like, damn. I'm like, yeah, even in my head, my mathematic number got me to 47. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. And I think I, I really like this Chiefs defense. It, it's, it's their identity, and it's who they are. And I think if they can put some pressure on Brock Purdy, make him make maybe some bad decisions. I, I Like, I love the teaser. I know I saw Teddy out here earlier yeah, this so week. So teaser to the over? I love the teaser over because I'm a sucker. Yeah. And I want a high-scoring like game. You know, I, I mean, mean life's to too short to bet the under game. Especially life's too Bowl. short to bet the under. All right, listen, time is flying by here, bro. So uh, what about some props? You got any player props, game props that uh, you put in already? Rasheed Rice, anytime touchdown, plus 130. Love him. Uh, I'm, I'm parlaying all these touchdown props. Travis Kelsey, because I think Taylor Swift wants to be on the NFL Network, and that's what's going to happen. <laughs> so Travis Kelsey, anytime touchdown, plus the Chiefs money line. Pachenko, anytime touchdown, plus the Chiefs money line. Reese, anytime touchdown, or Rice, I should say, anytime touchdown. So, so you're, you're the two team parlay, parlay, and yeah. I'm either going to be more bitter or I'm going to be okay. I want to get the number up here and accurate, but I threw this out here earlier. I want to see what Kansas, um, San Francisco to win the first half. San, Love that. San Francisco to win the game, but get this San Francisco to win the first half, Kansas City to win the game. There's some like plus 525. I love that. I love that because San Francisco's got to come out strong. Kansas City's been here yeah. to your And you know, you KC's know? never had a lead in the Super Bowl and in, in the three Super Bowls. They have, have it before. Detroit Lenny, man, the legend in the building. Great stuff, Lenny. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me. This team has been capable of overcoming deficits until this season. In 2023, the Kansas City Chiefs are 2-4 and four when they trail by more than 7 points at any point in the game. And the only two comeback wins that they have are over backup quarterbacks that do not have a lot of experience. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. I'm digging deep, fellas. I'm digging deep. Christian McCaffrey minus 220. Donnie, how could you do that? The price point is way out of control in this. Keep it simple. The goal is to win money, not to outsmart everybody. Mahomes is minus 140 to throw two touchdown passes. And if he's going to, every single thing suggests a wide receiver will haul in at least one, if not both. Pro football today. Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Point scored in the fourth quarter 
of that Falcon Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and the Niners were shut out. Yep. So in the two biggest games of Kyle, the two Super Bowls, one is the coordinator, one is the head coach, he hasn't scored a single point in the fourth quarter. That, if they, I tell you what, if they don't on Sunday, they're not winning the game, bro. Exactly. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. We're kicking in at the MGM Grand Countdown to kickoff continues. I am Gabriel Morenci. Welcome back to Sports Grid's coverage of Super Bowl 58, which I think has been pretty damn good. Um, I tell you what, all the hosts have done a great job. There's been great content. It's amazing, man, how far we've come as a network. I remember being at the Super Bowl years ago on a media row when we basically had a white plastic table that, like, Buffalo Bill fans <laughs> slam each other through. <laughs> No, like really, like we weren't always like this, and like each year we sort of we weren't always this like, civilized. Yeah, and even even our guests, they used to be, oh, we got an NFL player, or we got one of the guys on. Now, like it's like, man, we're jam packed. We got too many guests uh, this week, but we have to get Detroit Lenny on. Show some love, love for the people that join us that live in Vegas throughout the year, as the the Super Bowl is here uh, right now. So let's get. We got a couple of minutes here, yeah, because we're going to send it to uh, to Bob Mar Mar uh, Jonovich in a minute. But um, so what are some of the other props that you're looking at? You were talking about. So it sounds like you're kind of spraying the board with KC touchdown props in same game parlays. What yes. else are you looking at? Uh, 100%. I love the teaser. We mentioned that yeah. kind of. I love taking the Chiefs plus a touchdown For on the a record, teaser I'm and the on, over. I like San Francisco. I don't hate it. But I like San Francisco to win the game. But I actually did already place a teaser with the Kansas City Chiefs up to plus nine and over 40 and a half. Mm -hmm. I don't believe if the, if the Niners win, they're going to win by more than 10 points. That's, I was just going to mention, I don't think you go wrong on a teaser either way. I think if you go either way, one way or the other, I think you're good. I think this game is decided within a touchdown, and I think it's decided within three points of the total. I think that total is really, really sharp, and I wouldn't be surprised if you're going to see multiple teasers coming in over the board, and I think they're all going to be okay. You know the last two Super Bowls, too, and, you know, we remember, man, Super Bowls would often be blowouts in the past. Yeah. It'd be anticlimactic, you know, the hype about a Super Bowl, and then the game would start to be boring and be a blowout. Dud. Uh, but the last two Super Bowls have been lit. Yeah. The L.A. Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals, 23-20. Right on the number. And remember, right on the, in the history yeah. of Super Bowls, point spreads never mattered. Now they suddenly do. Now, yeah. Which it wouldn't actually shock me if it was a 24-23 game. And I, it landed right on the number. I, I, I don't disagree. I think in this particular game, you're betting the money line. There is no one and a half. I see some twos out there. Whatever. You're either taking the Chiefs money line or you're taking the 49ers money line. Take the spread out of it. I think you're getting a little too tricky if you're trying to, you know, think that the, you know, the Niners are going to win by one. You know, and that two that points is going to come you. into a. Uh, doesn't concern you. Like no. you'd, you'd rather the money. So you'd rather the money line. I'd than rather the tip. money line, You're and confident. I'm going to ride or die with them. Yeah, you don't. You don't need. <laughs> you don't need the tip. <laughs> no, I don't. You know, I don't want it because if I'm relying on it from a Chiefs fan. Like, if I'm a Niner fan, I'm saying minus the two because I think you're going to win by whatever. But if you're a Chiefs fan, just go with the plus money. You know, life's too short to bet unders. Hey, great, great stuff, uh, <laughs> Lenny. Uh, where can people find you online and your picks and your videos and everything else that you're doing? Absolutely. Find me at picksandparlays.net anytime. We're giving out free picks daily. Uh, go over there. You can see me all over the YouTube pages. Awesome stuff, uh, Lenny. Thanks a lot uh, for joining us, man. Thanks great, for having me, great, man. Great Appreciate it. You, Thank you. Great stuff uh, with uh, Detroit Lenny in the house. Listen, earlier in the week, I was on a, um, I was on a show in Vancouver with uh, Bob Marjanovic, who is the play-by-play -play voice at the BC Lions. Uh, he's like a radio le legend, and he actually he was a pretty good football player as well. Uh, but he's the play-by-play -play voice of uh, the BC Lions. And 
And uh, Bob, this is like his 23rd Super Bowl. Always has great guests uh, on all week. So we caught up uh, with Bob earlier in the day on Media Row. Let's see what he thinks about the game. We are live on Media Row in Las Vegas, Nevada. Countdown to kickoff continues. Super Bowl 58. It's nearly game time, baby. Let's bring in a man that calls uh, games, football games that I often go to. The British Columbia Lions play-by-play voice, BC Lion, play-by-play man, and radio legend Bob Marjanovic. What's hey, up, Mark? I got to tell you, I got to tell you, Gabe, this is the big time here. Two new West boys in Vegas. We got lights, we got cameras. And we got and, action. And we got action. Anytime Morenzi's around, you know there's going to be action. Yeah, we've got a lot of action going on. We've been kicking it all week long at MGM Grand. It's been a great time. Uh, you can come visit us um, or right here in the sports book. But you've had a great week uh, this week. You come to every Super Bowl. What, how many Super Bowls is this for you? 23, my man. 23, 23 on Media Row. Yeah. That's and, it. it's, uh, and how do you rank Vegas so far compared to some of the other ones? You know what? Honestly, we really haven't gone out of this little cocoon that much. You know what it's like. It's work, get back, try to get something to eat, try to get some rest. Uh, we were scheduled to go out last night. Unfortunately, there was an issue with Uber. We had to wait half an hour for an Uber that didn't show up, so we just wound up eating at the hotel. Yeah, I've spent so, a lot of time just in the hotel. And who would have thought that the weather would probably be nicer in Vancouver than it is in Las oh, Vegas no. uh, oh. this week? But you've had a lot of great guests on this week, so I'll say besides me, who was the best <laughs> guest that you had uh, on the show? But all kidding aside, I saw you had Dan Orlovsky, who I'm a big fan yeah. of. You had uh, Taylor Lewan on the program. Uh, you had uh, all kinds yeah, of guys. I who, mean, who, who, who stands out the most to you? What was your favorite interview of the week? Well, I mean, I thought Taylor Lewan was outstanding. You know, it's always such a small world, right, because we kind of started talking about Nashville and, you know, the connection between the Predators and the Titans, some of the guys that he knew. Little did I know that his wife is from Kelowna in the Lake Country in B.C., right? So Amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just <laughs> such a small world. And you know what it's like? You talk to people here, there's usually one degree of separation between somebody that you know. So let me ask you, what was, what's the consensus as far as the guests that you've had, the players, the analysis, uh, the analyst? What's the consensus? Who did they like? You know, it's interesting, Gabe, and I'm sure you've probably heard the same thing in the people and the guests that you've talked to. But it seems like everybody likes San Francisco, but then they get to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Right? It's kind of like, I like San Fran, but, but right? And that's the the, 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 the the big question. Who's that T.J. Ward on Super Bowl champion with the Denver Broncos? And I said, what's the question that you like to see answered? He goes, the, not necessarily answered. He goes, I want to see this question stop. People stop asking about Brock Purdy and whether he's legit. He goes, if Brock Purdy was a second-round pick, would we be talking about Brock Purdy right now in the same way as he is because he's Mr. Irrelevant? Brock Purdy has brought a team to the NFC Conference Championship game into the Super Bowl in his first two years as yeah. a starter in the NFL. And, and I thought he made a great point. If Brock Purdy was a second-round pick, they'd be raving about Brock Purdy. Hey, look at this guy, the value you're getting, a guy that has taken your team to this level. Because he's a seventh-round pick, Mr. Irrelevant, everyone's like, wow, they're, they're almost waiting for him to fail. Your guy, your boy is Joe Montana because you always hook him up with the Cubans, right? Uh, allegedly. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So, allegedly. Uh, uh, don't worry, there's a lot worse things going on in Vegas <laughs> than Cuban cigars, let me tell you. But all kidding aside, I saw Joe, I saw he was around. Yeah. Did you speak to him at no, all? Uh, we're going to tap, uh, we're going to talk with him tomorrow. Uh, and he was a little busy today, and we were kind of running around doing some other things, but we got him lined up for tomorrow. But I love that the fact I saw an interview with Brock Purdy, and Purdy was talking about, they asked, have you spoken to Joe Montana and or Steve Young? And he said, yeah, this week. Yeah. And he kind of shared. He was very open. And he said, Montana said, you're doing great. He said, just keep doing what you're doing. Let the players around you make plays and just keep do making the reads and just remain comfortable and calm. And he said it meant a lot. And Joe Montana told him, they used to say things about me, right, and just go out there and do your thing. And he said Steve Young got more technical and game tape on him. Yeah. Right? Saying, hey, watch out for this and watch out for that. But imagine having these two legends to two lead on. Two right? Uh, on a game week to, yeah. you know, to understand what he's going through. And even Steve Young, as much as he's a legend, you know, Moj, he had a lot of pressure on him because he was following Montana. Exactly. Well, I think, you know, there's a great story that Troy Aikman told us about Jimmy Johnson. Very first Super Bowl 
that the Dallas Cowboys were in. He said he came in, threw a two-by-four in the middle of the ro- locker room, and he said, how many of you guys want to walk across this two-by-four? Everybody raised their hand. He said, okay, I take this two-by-four. I'm going to put it between two buildings, ten stories high. How many guys want to walk across it then? Now you're kind of kind of getting this, right? And Jimmy looked around and said, guys, you've been walking across this two-by-four all year long. Just keep walking across the two-by-four. The fact of the matter is this. Just focus on doing what you've done all year long to get you here, right? Don't let all the other noise, all the other distractions get to you. Focus on what you've done. If you do that, you'll be fine. Well, we're having a great time here. It's the Super Bowl in Las Vegas, but we should note the Grey Cup championship game is in Vancouver. Uh, The World Cup is going to Vancouver in 2026 as well, but, you know, Vancouver is a great city. The Grey Cup is going to be off the hook. And I think the Lions are going to be all in this year. They have a great ownership group that's going to want to win in their home city. We've got to get out of here, Bob. Let me get your Super Bowl prediction. Who do you like? Who wins? And what's the final score, baby? Hey, you know what? I nailed it when New England beat Seattle 28-24. That was second and done. I've been I've been pretty well lately. I will go with this. I'm going to go Chiefs 27, 49ers 21. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. 27-21, Chiefs win it over the Niners. All right. There it is. <laughs> the Moge on sports. I wish we had more time, but we're on the clock here. Live from Media Row in Las Vegas, Nevada. Bring it. <laughs> Shout out to the Moge uh, for kicking it with us. 27-21, he says. Man, I got to tell you, we talk about this the, the total being sharp. If you'll notice, everybody's final scores are right around the number all the time. And I'm kicking around a couple of final scores uh, tomorrow. Listen, we're going to be on Sunday during the game, live from, uh, from New York, actually, uh, with Scott Farrell and Joe Ranieri. But, and I'm going to give all my final score predictions tomorrow. You know, 26-23, San Francisco. 27-23, San Francisco is another one. I keep coming back to the same ballpark. Like, I'm not, I'm not in the 30s. Right, so like 28-24, 27-24, 26-23, 20, I said 24-23 earlier, that, you know, that would just be right on the damn number, uh, but in those ballparks, but the thing is, at the prices that we're getting for the correct score props, we can play like 10 of them, right, I mean, you can play an endless amount, I mean, you're getting big time money for everything, like a good example, 27-24, which is a score that really could happen. I know it sounds generic, but it really could be 27-24 this game. Look, we, you know, it was 38-35 last year. It was 23-20 before that. We had two three-point games two years in a row in the Super Bowl. I, I'm almost expecting it to be a three-point game. So is it going to be 30-27? That feels a little high scoring. 31-28 feels a little high scoring. 30-27, too high scoring still. All right, let's get into the then. All right, 27-24, as we said. So 27-24, San Francisco to win 27-24 is 80-1. to 1. Kansas City to win 27-24 is 90-1. to 1. My prediction was San Francisco wins 27-23. That's 125-1, to 1, your correct score. This is like going to the horse track and taking nothing but long shots. Except these Super Bowl scores do land on these numbers, right? I mean, as I stated, 38, 35, 23, 20, uh, the last uh, couple of years. Total is 47 and a half, so it's sort of a guideline that we will be around this number. I think the number is so damn uh, crisp. But a bet that we've been talking a lot about is the San Francisco 49ers to win the first half. Mahomes has been in three Super Bowls before. The Kansas City Chiefs have never been leading at the half in any of the previous three Super Bowls that Mahomes has played in. He's been the comeback hit. And they've all been close games as well, with the exception of the one that they got smoked uh, by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which people don't seem to talk about that game. It's like it doesn't exist or something. And we should remember that, right? That They did get, like, punched in the mouth hard uh, in the Super Bowl before. But their offensive line was depleted at the time. More from the MGM Grand on the other side. Bring it.
This team has been capable of overcoming deficits until this season. In 2023, the Kansas City Chiefs are 2-4 and four when they trail by more than 7 points at any point in the game. And the only two comeback wins that they have are over backup quarterbacks that do not have a lot of experience. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. I'm digging deep, fellas. I'm digging deep. Christian McCaffrey minus 220. Donnie, how could you do that? The price point is way out of control in this. Keep it simple. The goal is to win money, not to outsmart everybody. Mahomes is minus 140 to throw two touchdown passes. And if he's going to, every single thing suggests a wide receiver will haul in at least one, if not both. Pro football today. Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Points scored in the fourth quarter of that Falcons Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and the Niners were shut out. Yep. So in the two biggest games of the two Super Bowls, one is the coordinator, one is the head coach. He hasn't scored a single point in the fourth quarter. <laughs> that if and I tell you what, if they don't on Sunday, they're not winning the game, bro. E exactly. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Shout out to all of our guests and everybody who joined us, including all the uh, the faithful, the fans, uh, the crazies walking by, everybody having a great time in Las Vegas, Super Bowl weekend. But shout out to my boy, Kyle Turley. That was awesome stuff. Catching up with Kyle Turley. The Honey Jones, class act uh, right there. The Moj, uh, the Moj, play-by-play uh, -play voice of the BC Lions. Uh, Detroit Lenny, Joe Gibbs. Uh, was with us, NFL uh, referee expert and statistician and data expert. That was a wealth of information that we got from him uh, earlier. And I just retweeted. There's a video on our on our Twitter and on Sports Grid's Twitter of uh, a couple of minutes of Joe's appearance. But if you're a serious NFL better and sports better, you need to be following uh, him. So tomorrow night, we're going to be back here one last night. I can't believe the week is done. This week has flown by. Flown. Like, this is... I've been to a lot of Super Bowls. This is the fastest media week I've ever, like, it's incredible how quickly it's gone. And I'm thinking, man, media week should be two weeks, actually. <laughs> like, when it's in Vegas, forget about, like, the bye week. We should just do this for, like, you know, 13, you know 12, 12 days, 13 days uh, leading, uh, leading up to the game. Tomorrow's going to be a big day for us. We're going to go out with a bang. The last day of the Super Bowl, we always do. We're going to share all of our props. And... Um, we're, we're very fortunate, part of the new Pat McAfee tradition. The last two years at the Super Bowl, I've been the last guest. And they've had some pretty big-time guests on uh, this week. But we're going to be on tomorrow, you know, in the last 10 minutes type of deal, the last 10, 15 minutes uh, of the show like we have been the past couple of years. We're going to have more uh, picks and props and mayhem on the McAfee show. I can't wait for that. And I can't wait to be here uh, one last night tomorrow night. You know what? We'll uh, we'll have a couple of uh, we'll have a couple of drinks with the Rageaholics that are hanging out here. We'll get our final bets in, and don't forget to keep it locked in right here on the grid all weekend long. 
We're going to be back on the East Coast. I haven't been back on the East Coast in years. We're coming back to do a show with Joe Ranieri and Scott Farrell on Super Bowl Sunday, baby. So as I say, to keep it locked uh, right here on the grid all weekend long. Great job by the crew uh, tonight. Other than that, you're on your own. Later.